Well, this is a nice enough house, but I think it's a bit too small for my needs. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bre welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. All right. So on the agenda for today, I think is just uh, yeah, it's going to be filling out more artisan tools, and possibly we have uh, we have a couple of chores that we could be doing. Uh, yes, we have uh, the reward for our tardiness last night. Yeah, good. I don't think I've picked up any gunpowder yet. Let's just get rid of creeper hearts. Uh -huh. Neat. I think creeper hearts are a bionization thing. So much blood. Lovely. But yes... We are gradually increasing our capabilities, gradually increasing the number of things that we can craft. And so, there's a number of tasks that... Is this... Huh, this bone must be infected. Well, don't need to throw it into the ocean, could just throw it out. I guess, and gunpowder. There's a number of things that we couldn't do before that we can consider now. Like, for example, I can create Minecraft torches using my little carpenter's workshop here. And those are, they don't go out in rain, they have full range, they're cheap and plentiful. If I just look at the recipe. And yes, it's just a stick and not an unfamiliar item. It can use coal coke to get you eight or it can use just regular old charcoal to get you four. Although to do that, we are going to need all of our tinker tools. So we need to work on that first. So. But yes, uh, the long and the short of that is that once I can get nice amounts of torches together, I might go and I might light up enough of the island that I can work all night without worry about monsters spawning. So our primary thing holding us back is we're going to need lots of tier 2 tool rods. But the good news there is, now that we have a handsaw, which I very hardly recommend as the first tool to build, and a carpenter's workshop, a handsaw and a carpenter's workshop, we can build them three at a time. And what's more, the tier one tool rods that go into them, yeah, we can make them three at a time. Same damn recipe, same damn costs, it's just three times the efficiency. So, that seems like a good first step. Let's fill up our buckets, and let's work on making us some tool rods. It's on the second damn page. I should have figured. Yes. We don't need quite as industrial amounts of pulp as we did before. But it's still good to keep a nice supply of it. And in fact, with wooden hoppers on the horizon, we might look at making some easier automation of things going forward. I think that soaking pots would have to wait. I'm not even sure if soaking pots are compatible with hoppers. And I would need some sort of piping for them any anyway. I know that buildcraft pipes are a long way off, and I think... Yeah, I think that any sort of liquid moving around infrastructure would have to wait for next chapter. Like, even if I had just a tank that I was filling manually, I wouldn't have any means of moving from the tank to the pots just yet. But I could, with wooden hoppers make the uh, make the sawmill much easier to use. That would be something that I could do. In any case, let's see here. If I make 16 of these, I would make a full stack of stone rods, right? Yes, and that would be 32 total of those, so I'm going to need 32 total sticks. 
So the processing chain on wood to sticks goes wood to two planks to two boards. So one wood to four boards, or, or to four slabs, I should say, to eight boards, and then to 16 sticks. So I'm going to need to process down four logs in order to make a stack of sticks, which I might as well just do. Oh, but I need a saw for the sawmill. Of course. How silly of me. And to do that, I'm going to need to dig up some more diorite, I do believe, because I don't think I have any in storage. No, not really. Well, the good news is so shovels are so cheap right now that it is no problem to just go hunting for a little diorite. Yes. With the fact that we can make Minecraft shovels, maybe I should have just made two or three of them just because they're so cheap and easy right now. But we can dig up stacks and stacks of gravel, get ourselves a lovely collection of everything we need. And to make a diorite saw blade, I'm going to need a nice collection of, uh, let's see, 8 plus 7. I'm going to need 17 diorite pebbles. Let's see if we can get that on one tank of air, eh? That seems like a nice challenge, even though the uh, it's pretty much purely RNG. A nice challenge to our luck, yes. Which means I'm inevitably going to lose. I'm not going to see another diorite. Oh, never mind. Never mind. My luck isn't quite that bad. Yes, lovely. Lovely jubbly. Now, the next question is, how far do I want to develop that saw blade? Optimally, I would want to take it as far as I could, if I could take it all the way to the obsidian. Yeah, that might... I don't know if I can mine obsidian. I don't think iron can mine obsidian, so no, that's not on the cards right now. But I could very well take it all the way to diamond. However, to do that, I'm going to need some gold. There is a source of gold I can tap into right now. It'll be a little bit of a trick. That's andesite. Let's put this away, just to be safe. It'll be a little bit of a trick, but I think I could manage it. Yeah, let's take some construction blocks. You see, these ships that we see everywhere have big collections of metal blocks inside of them. The problem being that they are also dark on the inside, so monsters will start spawning if you aren't careful. And that can make them very tricky to plunder. Hello. Nothing seems to be spawning in this one. Why? I should be seeing red dots on my map by now. Ah, but this is one that doesn't have any iron in it, I don't, or any metal in it, I don't think. In any case, let's just start poking holes in the ceiling just in case we want to come back here for all these loot boxes. Yes, that is the easiest way to uh, safe these, make these safe early on, is just to poke some holes in the ceiling. That will vastly reduce the encounter rate. And notice that we can actually use the factory blocks now. So if we wanted aesthetic blocks to make our base pretty, we could look into deconstructing some of these ships. Oh shoot, it's turning night. Yes, and that ship is already full of griblies. Is there a bed we could sleep at over at the Alchemists? There might be. 
There might just be. Ah yes, I remember. He offers you the use of this little house next to his next to his workshop because they're working day and night, so they don't need it. Excellent. Excellent lag. Yes. Well, poor luck on that first ship. Let's try some others. We already have some unwanted guests going overboard to come and greet us, I suppose. Yes, first of all, I should poke inside to see if I can see some metal in there. No, this one isn't a metal carrier. What happened here? Interesting. Is it the color of the blocks on the side that determine whether or not it has metal inside of it? Like whether or not it's a... It's a barge? Yeah, just kind of lure them out, take them as they come. Aha! We have discovered our bounty. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get up topside, and I'm going to start poking holes in it to try and get it lit up. And then, I'll see about swimming away from it to despawn, rinse and repeat as necessary. I think that'll be my strategy. I guess that I could just use the resources I have at hand. There we go. Get up on there. Now we're nice and snug up on the upper deck. Yeah, yes, these things also have a supply of asphalt, which not, is not familiar to me yet. That's next age. And yeah, see, poke some holes down there. And just by doing that, we'll have this deck pretty well secured. And then I'll swim away and despawn them. And that will leave me able to clear out to the next deck. Just work our way down until the whole ship is safe, at least during daytime hours. It probably won't be completely safe. There's always a bunch of little cubby holes and side rooms and stuff like that. There we go. Ah, levers aren't familiar to us yet, but we do want to start building them up. They're pretty expensive to make and they're useful. And I did not build myself a backup pickaxe, did I? Oh well. We needed to swim away anyway to get this. Uh, let's let's mark our ship. Call this current mining target. Nice magenta text. I approve. Let's just throw out these factory blocks. Well, throw out. Yeah, there we go. 
asphalt is plentiful enough that I'm not going to bother start stockpiling it or anything like that. Hmm. I should have put something of some description on to cook while I was doing this. Speaking of, I think we're moving far enough away that we need to start chunk loading our base. To do that, we just kind of click on it on this little map, and then is it right click? No. Is it shift left click? Yes. Good. Our base is chunk loaded. I never remember how to do that. I almost never use that mod. Eh, I don't need to hold on to an iron door. Do want to hold on to that lever though. Levers are something that is useful. And let us build ourselves a couple of pickaxes. They're cheap enough now that we should consider keeping a couple of them. There we go. Yes, getting an upgrade. Which might be mildly worse than our last model, but uh, I, I suppose the cheapness is something to speak for itself. And this will show us just how good of a job we were doing with uh, clearing it out, I suppose. This is not our current mining target, is it? No, I marked the wrong dang ship. Ah, yes, and I see. The... The tanker, the barges have that... strip of asphalt on the top that I don't think the others had. Let me see if I can get a gander that over there. Yeah, no, these ones just... Those ones just have, uh... All metal hulls. So let's clear that one out. Yeah, see, the upper deck is more or less clear. It is a little bit risky just hopping on down, but what you gonna do? And now we just clear out the lower deck as well. Actually, we can use our F7 vision to better get an idea of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have caught an airborne disease from a Mr. Skeleton or something. There we go. And now we just need to swim away one more time. And that should, by and large, clear out the ship. Easy as that. But yes, you see, these are iron blocks here that have just been chiseled. And there's a more varied collection of metals below decks. So, no, if I, if I want to decorate with factory blocks, then I will come back with a, I'll, I'll wait until I have a tinker's hammer to really stock up on, on acquired decoration blocks. Yeah, just, it looked like swimming back to my base was a pretty good idea of how far I had to go. Because I'm not sure if the actual spawn range is reflected by our map or not. Let's see. Yeah, it should be something like 240 or something like that. No, 128. Uh, yeah, 240 is the absolute spawn range. 128 is despawn range. 
So we didn't swim too much farther than we had to. Hmm. Still red dots. What is happening? It looks like I'm missing something over on... Oh well, yeah, I can, I can poke holes in the sides as well. That'll also... That'll also help. There we go. Get everything nice and cozy light in there. Everything that we can see, anyway. I'm just seeing little flashes of red from the F7 mode from time to time, and using them to the best of my capabilities. And it's looking like it's time to run back to the Alchemist Island again for another power nap. Not enough hours in the day, I tells you. It is definitely nice having a more convenient outpost nearby that we can hit without having to uh, cause chaos back on the mainland. And hopefully, when I swim back this time, the ship should be pretty clear. Yeah, there we go. Nice, safe little mining... Oh, no, no, got a couple of griblies. Got a couple of griblies. Found them and everything. Can I... Okay, so it's right down the center and the back. Gotcha. It's like right around this level is where we need to poke in. I've already got a poke in there, so what's going on? Something over in this area, then. Let's see if I can just kind of sneakily steal a gold block. Oh, I don't have a good enough pick, do I? No, I need my Norman pick for this. Oh, and yeah, there's also some gold blocks right there. That would be an easier target. But I'm trying to clear this for future excavations. And I believe that uh, that thing, these gears that we picked up, are from uh, one of those iron rewards chests. And they are moderately valuable, I guess. So sure, I'll hang on to them. Put those right there. Yes, I should have figured that I would need the fancy pick for this. Let's take a bite of tripe. Lovely. Alright, do we have a nice safe mining target right now? So far, so good. Aw, oh, still got a couple grizzlies. Darn. Well, I will climb up to the second level, I think, and I will 
just uh, I'll just take those upper deck gold blocks are they up here yeah they were up here I'll just take these and I will come back when I have better weapons and armor like some Tinker's Construct weapons, Tinker's Construct armor. And it will be really easy to clear out all the rest. We've we've done... We've cleared out the horde, is the thing. Now the spawn area is small enough that when I come back with armor and torches, I can light up the ship really easily. And um, it, won't be a, it won't be much of a problem. And let's... Oops journey map. Let's just turn that off for right now. Just to keep our view clean. And there we go. We have a nice collection of gold. Yes, quite a lot of it. So with that, we can build a better sawmill blade. Yes. And I believe the gold one also... Yeah, it just requires shards. Which... Hmm. Oh, I see. It's an exact conversion. It's just... Yes. And let's keep the Norman pick right there because it's kind of a tool for breaking up tougher metals as well. Good. So, sawmill, blood, lovely. Knock together a diorite, smooth it up. Rock it to me. Next phase is, I already have enough of those. I already have enough of those. Excellent. Dip. Dip. Next, iron is going to require a little bit of finagling. I suppose I should put my spare gold right there. Yes. Yes. Let's make a couple of things of iron shards. Aw. There we go. Yes, it's a little bit of work, but they can be got by a stone pick. Iron saw blade. Now note, the iron saw blade has 500 durability, the gold has 32. Yeah, gold saw blade is only useful as a prerequisite to higher tiers. To make these diamond shards, it's with the pick. Does it have to be an iron pick? It looks like it... Oh, no, no. It looks like it can be any pick. Neat. So let's just take a diamond. Takes quite a lot of work, though. But regardless, diamond saw blade. That should last us quite a little while. And uh, it's not... Yeah, it's only got 345 less uses than an obsidian sawmill blade. Unfortunately, I think once we start using it, we aren't going to be able to upgrade it. But that's life. So I think I determined I wanted to run four logs completely down. Oh, let's give it a nice supply of charcoal. Just because we might be babysitting that a little bit. And I suppose while that's cooking, I can start working on some of... Yes. So I'm going to need compressed sticks. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I, I wanted 32 compressed sticks in total. That's what I wanted. And I'm going to want to start running down these masonry bricks. Oh, 
That's right. This is a refractory now. We actually have to keep an eye on it for when it's done. Shoot. That's actually kind of inconvenient. And that's why I was rambling about wanting to put a hopper on it. Because of the way it works. Yeah. Well, more accurately, put two hoppers on it, I suppose. Can I place additional on here? No, I would have to... Okay, well, that'll just have to be what we do. In any case... Doop, 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 doop. And it's in here that I want to make the tool rods. Tool rod tier 1's over here, yep. Lovely jervely. We need more paste, as we always do. How's uh, this uh, going? Almost done. Or rather, I should say, almost ready for the next stage. And... Um, let's just start clearing out this while I think. Ah, uh, yes, I should get some... I should get some copper a-cookin', shouldn't I? Yes. Because I am going to need more of those copper rods. Aw, I missed my... I missed my opportunity. Oh well. Ugh. I really should build a roof at some point. This rain getting me down to hypothermia. I might actually even start taking damage from the cold. Warm me up, oven, please. It ain't gonna happen. In any case. Yep. And... Yeah. Oh, right. I was starting a fire for the... For these... One more of those. Aha! Beat you to it! And yes, you see, since I can transform these boards directly into compressed sticks, you see how very easy Tier 1 tool rods are right now. There we go. Well, easy when you don't mind the fact that you're basically babysitting this machine. Because it's such a messy eater. And I, I suppose that there's ways that I could head that off, but then I'd be losing out on wood chips. Mm. Tasty, tasty wood chips. In any case, I should get more pulp cooking. I need to get more sugarcane soon. Almost. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Get lots of boards for our work. I thought it only doubled at each stage, but it looks like it goes way more than that. I suppose that as we kind of gain industrial capacity, we also need to scale up our production of base resources. Let's just get rid of those. 
Why do I have a sapling? That's ridiculous. Yes, you have a little bit of time, but not all that much. Shoot. Well, we have a stack of... We have more than a stack of boards on hand right now, so... That's good enough, I suppose. And... I can press down our wood chips. Probably gonna break my shovel. Yep, but it did exactly enough work. Good shovel. And just a single one of those. Lovely. And let's get some of those wood chips a burning, I guess. Go. Very nearly set my face on fire for some reason there. It's it's not for everyone, but I guess some people just want to be toasty. Ah, lovely. Stacks and stacks of charcoal, just what we wanted for Christmas. How is our copper coming along? Excellent. Let's just give that a little bit more juice. I have not yet adapted to the charcoal being in a stash. Eat some lunch. And get a smithin. There we go. Yes, I only do it four at a time because uh, it gives me a little bit of grace and clumsiness. I think if I really rush, I might be able to do five or even six. But that would require constant perfection that... I'm probably not even capable of achieving. Excellent. And I suppose that I also should have been cooking up some refractory stuff. That should probably be our next tool, in fact, is not the uh, framing tool and framing axe, whatever, and the chisel, but we should be making an artisan's hammer. Because the artisan's hammer will help us with the production of refractory clay. Yes, you see in the basic workshop, it allows us to... Ah, uh, yes, and in fact, I think that's a hint that we now may have access to this limestone. Yes. And now that we have access in this limestone, the way we process it is with the artisan's hammer. And that will make the crushing of limestone a much less arduous task. Let's just keep that in a smooth stone. So yes, artisan's hammer. Let's keep that on the recipe list. We're going to need three, four, five, six, seven tier two tool sticks. So I think I already have all the rods that I need. I just need the refractory clay, which I'm going to have to make the stupid way for hopefully one last time. Well, not the complete stupid way. You know what I mean. So I'm just going to need... I have 16 in there. Are my... Yeah, I have enough to make one batch of slaked lime in there. 
I just need the lime powder. Do I have the lime pebbles? I guess I could do these. Oof, our vision is going white because we're so cold. Out in the freezing rain. Let's do 32. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds like a nice round number. <sighs> Just hammer it away. Know that with each one we grow yet closer to having an easier production chain. It is imminent. And what's more, all the light limestone that has been taunting us will now be within our grasp. Wonderful times. Excellent, no losses. Doop, 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 doop. Let's continue emptying out our wood tar. Yep, it is so damn cold out we are in fact taking damage from it. So let's get a campfire going just as a uh, just as a stopgap. We have a little bit of wood we can use. Let's just set that up right there. There we go. That should help. It'll at least keep us from dying of rain. Oh, right. It's raining. Three. You happy now? There. Hmm. I suppose that might be one way of conserving tinder, is by putting it out with rain. I mean, I don't think you can pick it up again. I think that if I were to deconstruct the deconstruct the campfire, it would just poof up. Yeah, that's still burning. How's this doing? And no, I'm probably not ever going to need 16 buckets of wood tar in this thing, but it, it's kind of a principal thing, you know. Waste not. Keep the tank empty. Excellent. So now with that, I can just do this, and then do this, and then over in ya, do this. And that gives us a nice, lovely 24 tier 2 tool rods. Yes, seriously, try saying that five times fast. It is a lovely little tongue twister. Let's just get us some more durable twine with which to play with. And I believe all that else... Let's see, hammer. Yep, sticks, twine, and diamonds. That is it. Oh, and wood tar. You can see that it's very convenient having multiple work tables laid out. Thank you, game, for worrying me with your lag. <sighs> now, let's keep this first hammer over here. That's another reason to have multiple work tables, is not all recipes are going to use the same three tools. And while you can just keep them in the store, it gets a little bit troublesome swapping around. Any case, now, instead of having to do that back and forth over on the anvil, we can just do this. Yep. And that should work for any solid limestone, I think. Yeah, those are all chiseled limestones. Come on, switch to something other than chisel, please. Why are there so many chiseled limestones? I would never use that for decor. 
that would be a horrendous use of wealth. There it goes. Yeah, it uses smooth pyrotech as well. So if I found a better source of this pyrotech limestone, which I believe that's what the that's what the uh, chunks form up into. Let's see. Use those. Yeah, those form into the pyrotech limestones. So if I found a rock that dropped those raw limestone chunks, which I believe there might be one out there, then that would be a really quick way of gathering up tons of limestone. But yes, that light-colored limestone has been everywhere. It has been a thorn in our side. It is here, it is there, it is everywhere, and now we can finally use it. And what's more, we can use it very, very quickly, very, very cheaply. I'm just going to get this quickened and uh, get another round slaking. I'm probably going to need another bucket. There we are. And let's just bet that I'm right about needing another bucket. Oops. Ah, yes, that's right. It slakes in a basic workshop for much more efficiency. So, yeah, that's what I was talking about, that um, by the time you can automate the soaking pots, you aren't really using them anymore. Hmm. The problem here is that now it doesn't really go evenly, you know? It kind of goes 25 at a time instead of in 8s and 16s and things that are divisible by stacks. Is that a full 25 in there? Yeah, that is. But these things have integrated storage slots, so that's a little bit convenient. And I'm going to need more flint clay. And now that I have the hammer, we can do flint clay a lot more easy, too. That's why I put it in this one, in fact. Because now I can do this, and now I can do this, and now I have a ton of crushed flint, and I can do this. In fact, I can just do this. Yes, there you go. And keep all that in there. And that is just how easy refractory clay has become now. It is as simple as that. Oh, right, carpenter. And that's going to do, that's going to be used in a tons of things. Yeah, yeah. Ah, but it's the recipe that I want, not the uses. A derp. And there we are. Now, we want to make an artisan's copper framing hammer. Let's make another set of uh, twine. Let's keep that in here too. And grab our diamonds. Already. That's what I want, the framing hammer. Except I want it over in this workshop. Just one of those. And I believe the next one is Artisan's Chisel, right? Copper Driver, okay. Arty Dry... Yeah, it's just called a driver, okay. Excellent! And all three of those we will keep over in this carpenter's workshop because those are the three most commonly used tools, I do believe. Uh, if I look at recipe for torch, it uses that. If I look at uses for driver, you see that it's pretty much always always those three tools right over there. So that is our carpentry sorted, pretty much. And I'll just collect my rewards. 
it looks like it's kind of uh, waiting towards deco block snow blocks. That's interesting. Can I break those down into snowballs in New H? No, that's just a decorative. That's just a decorative snow. For a moment, I was excited. Oh well. I guess keep that over there. Clay balls. Flint clay. Put that over there. Everyone's favorite part of the day. Putting all my shit away. And... Thatch gets thrown out. Log piles. Huh. These must be infected. Oh well. Yes. You see how you see how unfortunate it is when you get infected with something, like half of your inventory suddenly becomes non stackable. In any case Ah uh, yes, that's why I was doing math for sticks and not for boards, even though boards was what I needed at the time. I was looking at what I would be doing for my torches. So yes, it is time to get some torches going because I think just before I sign off I'm going to try and light up the island some. Get us working 24-7. So let me take a look. I'm gonna guess my spawn range to be like right out to let me stand over in this corner. Yeah. So just from the squids swimming in the water, I'm guessing my spawn range is somewhere over here. So I'm going to put a marker over here. See how distant that is. That's 72 meters. That's not what nearly spawn should be. But in any case, I'm just also going to guess roughly over there. And a little bit further. A little bit further. Like out to there. that one. Yeah, 74 meters is what it's saying. So then, if I, if I tell it to follow me so it gets on the right proper dang vertical chunk. So, if I guess that as roughly my spawn, then like there. Like, eh there. See, that's one, two, three, four, five chunks away. Five. So that's about the range that we want to spread torches to. This, this kind of box of the island is what we're going to, is what we're going to want to light up. Just as a rough estimate. It is slightly more than what we need, but it's also taking into account, like, moving around, you know? Let's take this down. If the campfire gets put out, it gets put out. We no longer need its warming glow. Hmm. These are infected now. Lovely. And that's done. Of course it is. I wasn't babysitting it. Ah, that's where I got confused. It isn't doing simple times two multiplication anymore. The refractory multiplies each stage by three. So yes, the refractory sawmill with a diamond blade. Is it the blade or is it the refractoriness that causes the multiplication factor? I don't know. Either way, one of those two factors, whether it's saw blade or saw mill, is causing much more multiplication of resources. And let's just work down to sticks already. Mm. Actually, can I get some wooden hoppers? 
Yeah, that just uses tier two tool sticks and glue, and we have all the tools for it. I just need to go and source some chests. So I tell you what I could do. Oops. What I could do. Just remove those until we need them. I could go out and do I know any platforms that look to be the right type? I don't think I do. Okay, we're going out on a bit of a field trip to find some chests because screw babysitting the sawmill to that extent. And I happen to know from Mr. Riley that there is a certain platform out in the wild that happens to have a chest. A certain platform type, I should say. It spawns infinitely out in the ocean. And that can hopefully be a little bit helpful to us. I think it's only the type with, yeah, with that kind of big overhanging dongle of clay on it. And the water pouring down the center. Let's just swim right up. Now, each one of these has hidden a chest. And I'm going to want two of those. Yes. Yes, just two. I will make the uh I will make the ultimate destination of them simply a um Yes. Simply probably a sturdy version of one of the pyrotech storage solutions. Oops. Well, isn't that lovely? Yes, don't get under a uh, bit of moving water. It's bad for your health. Oh, and actually, while I'm here, I should distinguish this platform somehow, just so I know in the future not to go to it. I guess, um... If I draw a nice big line through it. Is that something I can see on Journey Map if I look? Yeah. That marks it so that I know not to go to it in the future. If I bother to look at Journey Map, which I might not, because I am known to derp. Hmm. In any case, let us go and find two more of those. This shouldn't take too terribly much exploration. And we might be... Can we make a boat yet? No, we can't. A Minecraft boat would move slightly faster than this. But we just need to have a little bit of patience. Really, at one point I should go along and I should deconstruct all these different ship and platform types and I should see what goodies they all hold. Some of them I think are just nothing but masses of reward chests. The sailboats in particular are pretty bad. I know that these platforms have, um, they have iron blocks and some pistons and other redstone components like levers in them. Yes, those sailboats, I think, are just some good decorative blocks, at least. They got Futura blocks on them, but they're mostly just a bunch of reward chests. You can get wood planks from those little uh, quartz yachts, which um, is something I should have done early on, but didn't.
And yes, I could technically just craft chests, but that's a lot of resource investment. Remember that each of one of these glue is a refractory is a refractory brick. Each one of these tool sticks is, well, let's see, four goes into three, so it's a little bit more than one refractory clay ball for each one of those. So that's a lot of refractory clay to spend on a chest. Even though it's a lot cheaper now, it's still not an inconsiderable cost when you're investing that much of it into a single item. What I wish is if I could just steal them from the alchemist. But unfortunately, his chests are locked chests, millionaire locked chests, and uh, those just disintegrate no matter what you, no matter what you dig them up with. Hmm. Those little uh, geodes down there that you might just be barely able to see below the water. Those are railcraft. And um, I suppose... I, I don't think I know what those blocks are yet. I don't think I can use them. But they do occasionally have goodies in them as well. Like, I think they have emeralds and diamonds. And can I use that block? Uh, no. Train engineer is a long ways away. But um, I do believe they can be either chiseled or crafted into smooth variants, and they make decent, like, flooring blocks. They're nice and classy and black. At least if they can be crafted into smooth forms, like I'm thinking. As they are, eh, I don't like that kind of rough look they have. I suppose that while I'm out here, I'm doing a little bit of real, real estate shopping as well, pondering what I want to build my walls and floor out of, because this will be the easiest way of acquiring it. I could buy it from the Normans, but for the size of the building I'm looking at making, that would probably be an unreasonable investment just for decoration. I mean, there's really not much else I'm going to be buying from them, I suppose. Well, I'm gonna occasionally be buying food, but that costs practically nothing. No, no, I want to save my money because if I get a stack of 64 denier ore, the gold deniers, if I get a, st a stack of 64 gold deniers, then I get a new life from one of the NPC vendors. So yes, I mustn't spend frivolously. Money literally shall be my lifeblood at one point. I should get a Deneer's pouch. Aha! We have our savior! Yes. And thankfully we're getting to it before dark. So it won't just uh, suddenly populate up with monsters. All right, guess the side. Hmm, I think that's two for two for it being on the north side. I'm not sure if that's always the case, though. And I might be misremembering in any case. Goody. Oh, right, I should mark it. Just so that I know that this one has been... has been uh, depleted. Just draw a nice... big, fat line... right across its nose. And is that visible in 
map. Yes, it do. And that's just so that um, if I do a bunch of exploring and uncover a bunch of platforms, I can uh, scroll through in Journey Map and see, like, okay, this one's... Like, like I can uh, look around. I'm looking for the white dongly side, and I can zoom in and say, okay, that one's marked. Okay, uh, where am I? That one's marked. And I could uh, then look around until I find one that's not marked. Actually, let's not. Let's aim for the north of there and visit the alchemist one more time. Yes, platforms, you definitely want to reach them before night, but once you're on them, you'll be pretty well safe, because they're not big enough for something to spawn away from you. Oh dear, the Alchemist Island is populated. spiders. Oh dear. Where is boat? Uh, there is boat. Let's get outie. Let's head for the village. Yeah, that'll have much better distractions. Oh, gun skeleton? Seriously? Well, at the very least, we can uh, ensure. Yeah, just run for the water, swim away, despawn them. Well, we are back to being, uh, back to being even more mortal. Back to just the lives we started with once more. But it was in the process of fixing this so that hopefully that never happens again. Which is what I'm going to tell myself every time. Seriously, though. Frickin' gun skeleton. Ugh. Good, good. Everything that is ours. Yes, and you see that our jungle pods, I think... They all landed in one stack, they planted, and that annihilated all of them. I really don't like that Dynamics Tree's behavior. Hmm. You know what? While we're in town, let's buy ourselves a Denier Pouch. Just save us some Oh, hey, cider. I guess an NPC died? I guess, and let's uh, clear out, remove our shame, as well as the confusion factor. Hello? Is there a traitor coming? 
I saw them. Yeah. Ah, there you are. You were just away somewhere. Okay. Oh, yes, we can buy ci cider saplings. That's always lovely. But yes, this burst of deniers, as it used to be called, costs half of a denier ore, which is pretty ridiculous. But once you buy it, all your deniers get sucked into there, and it'll just keep track of them. Compile them into a single slot. Um, if you have multiple stacks of deniers, I think you can combine them. So it's just very convenient. Do I know what arrows are now? I do. Hmm. But I don't have a bow, and they're they're kind of convenient where they are right now anyway. Anyway, let's sort away and get ourselves sorted as well. Aww. Why was I carrying the artisan's diamond hammer around? Well, we didn't lose it, so it's not a huge deal. Maybe those bones are infected? They're the bigger stack regardless, I guess. We could consider that kind of a plant product because it's used to make bone meal. In any case... Sure, why not? And... there we go. I guess some monster is burned to death. Two. Let's just throw it out, except for the gunpowder, because gunpowder I don't think we have a lot of right now. There we go. All right. In any case, I wanted to make some hoppers so that I don't need to babysit the uh, sawmill quite so much. And thankfully, I already have two glue. I put away the tool rods. Yes, I did. Then I just need some of those. And I believe it was in the carpenters. Yes. Just why is it no? Oh, it doesn't have water. Well, we can fix that nice and easy. There we go. So, two wooden hoppers. Next, I'm gonna need an input and output chest, for which I will just use the cheaper Pyrotech stuff. So, our output, do I have any more of the, where was I keeping them? There was I keeping them. So, the first thing to do is clean up the area. So, first thing is start from our output, which will just be right here. Got a nice wooden hopper going in there. We'll put our sawmill on top of that. And then a wooden hopper on the top side which looks a bit awkward but oh well what are you gonna do and I think even with just that I should be able to input a single stack of something on there which is already much more convenient yeah like if I put um, then I should be able to a dupe and a dupe And as that processes, we should see... Yep, that goes down, and that goes in. So yeah, that is a lot easier just as it is. And now I'm going to see about making a shelf, I suppose. Let's just 
six planks and three of those. And maybe just get myself some blocks so I can get up on that level. And it looks a little bit derp, but oh well. So why you know? Hmm. Oh well. Yeah, I don't care about those wood chips. And yes, now I can just quite nice and easy put a huge collection of things up on there, and eventually they'll find themselves all the way down here fully processed. The sawmill is now much more friendly. But I don't want to go with just logs. I'm working my way down to uh, down to sticks right now for torches. And I suppose if I really wanted to make this zero maintenance, I could, um, I think if I put slabs down around this, let's grab a few. Like if I put, um, just around, that would be enough to stop the wood chips. Yep, it's looking like it. And then, if I want wood chips again, I can have them in a nice predictable position. They should land here every single time now. Looking like it. Maybe then, if I wanted to be really fancy later on, I wonder... I wonder, like, if this got hit with a piston or something, would it deconstruct? Hmm. Or even, like, if I just had another hopper here, would a hopper automatically suck it in? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting ideas must test further in in science mode yes I, I have a uh, I have a side world uh, a world in creative mode where I test out the little ideas I have every once in a while uh, yes one other thing I'd like to do is um, for for just the mass area I'm going to be lighting up to prevent mob spawns, yeah, I'm just going to have torches. But for my base, I think I'm going to be a little bit fancier than that. I don't like the look of torches sticking up out of the ground. So um, I'm going to use the easiest inset flooring block that I have right now. Uh, glowstone will be on the menu pretty soon, but not yet. So instead, I'll just be making a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns. They're easy enough, especially with this lovely line of pumpkins right here. And I'm thinking, yeah, that line of wheat over there must not be chunk-loaded. Hmm. Eh, I don't think we're going to be doing our farmer impression anymore. Because we are getting close to Tinker's Construct, and um, why? There must have been NPCs or monsters jumping around in there. Um, once we get into Tinker's Construct, then we'll be able to make a chisel. And with a chisel, we will be able to get loads of money. Loads of loads of money. So we won't be worrying about... Um, playing with the farm anytime anymore, I don't think. 
in any case, let's make what torches I can right now. Just like that. And then I do believe it's just a torch and a pumpkin. Yep, to make a jack-o'-lantern. And let's start lighting up our floor. Just because we can. So, range of a jack-o'-lantern is what, remind me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six. Let's put our first one right there. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right there. Excuse me. Eh, no, that's not quite good enough, I suppose. Darn. Miscounted. Oh, well. Oh, well. Hmm. So then if I make it here, will that... Mm. Yeah, if I make it there and there. Nope, not quite. It needs to be there. I was right with my first instinct after all. And thankfully, once you lay out the first ones, it gets easier from there. You just boop and boop. Now, unfortunately, I think with jack-o'-lanterns, we just can't put them on a uh, tile all on their own. They need support from beneath. So that might get problematic in some of the later sections of the platform. Yeah. We'll have to do that. So I'm going to need some more support blocks as well. Oh, but isn't this just lovely? We have automated processing at last. This is just a beautiful, beautiful day. And all I need to do is occasionally remove the wood chips if I just want it running at maximum efficiency. I mean, I don't think it'll even slow it down if I let the wood chips build up. It's just kind of, you know, they stop building up and then I'm losing out on a free resource that I can burn into charcoal. In any case, yes, you see, you just go to the edge of their range on F7 mode, and technically I could make them more sparse than that, but eh. This gives us a nice even grid with some redundancy, you know? And yeah, it is about time that I just remove the last little bits of uh, sloppiness over here. Completely even out our production chamber is just something to do while the woods are processing which isn't it lovely that we can now queue up a massive order and just have it be doing while we are frittering away our hours on some luxurious activity like this 
the modern era, everyone. Yeah, that's still going to be going for a little while. Pretty soon we might have to make entertainments for ourselves, which I suppose is what I'm doing, really. Well, entertainment for myself and others. If I were just on my own, I might be willing to just let this go idle. Yeah, I don't care about clay balls. I don't care about dirt, really. The sugar cane I'll keep. Let's make a couple shovels. It's cobbled andesite. Will that work? It do. Any cobblestone will work. There we go. A nice unnecessary excavation accomplished. And yeah, I'll fill in these derp blocks just for the ease of uh, walking. And now that I have these hanging out, it's a reminder that yeah, it's getting close to time to decorate the floors. In any case, a boop and a boop. Yes, I know it's more work. I know it's utterly unnecessary. I know it's possibly even disadvantageous because now I can build over them and create dark spots, but. I just don't like the look of torches sticking up. And I guess that's just my own personal neuroses. And you all just have to deal with it. Of course, it's exactly on our chopping block. Looking good so far. How many is this per row? One, two, three, four, five, six. Exactly. Huh. Neat. Yeah, where did that block go? Did I pick it up and not count it right? Or what? Oh well. Time for sleep. And yes, I know this is a boring chore, but um, yeah, I, I made a moderate amount of progress and I just wanted something a little bit nice, something, something luxurious for the day. It's truly unfortunate that these things need support. But unfortunately, I just can't easily make glowstone right now. I think it might be in this chapter. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a production with liquid clay, all those tools, and it takes nine of it, and yeah, yeah. And uh, glowstone dust is mined from the abyss.
And I think it weighs a ton, too. Oh, what the hell. Fine. You can be a unintentional support pillar. Just double checking my alignment from time to time. There we go. We'll continue expanding the jack-o'-lanterns when we have pumpkins to jack. And in the meantime, we should have... Ah, good. That finished just in time. Surprised it ran out of charcoal before it ran out of... Or, or I'm surprised it ran out of wood before it ran out of charcoal. Yes, now we have a couple of stacks of sticks to play with. We can get rid of those. Are those the infected ones? I guess they must be. In any case. Yes, with that we can just make ourselves a nice couple of stacks o torch. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty rare that you run through water in one of these tables, but that just shows the scale that we're working at right now, I suppose. Because we're doing a bit of a ridiculous project for this stage. That too. And now we're just going to go and we're going to fill in a nice area around our base and try and create a safe zone. So let's just start working from our jack-o'-lantern lights. And I really wish that having a torch in your hand wouldn't do this with the F7 mode, but oh well. Ah yes, and I wanted to uh, have my markers on. Just in case. And I probably should be building out to a farther reach than this, but oh well. Yes, we definitely want torches under the trees as well. Just because I think the foliage can get so thick that they can be spawnable in daylight. Maybe not with these trees, just spaced out as they are, but... I have experience... Traumatic experience with dynamic trees in the past. Alright, we need to return our raft home. It is such a noble steed and been so polite to us. We've moved out a little bit past our estimate, which is, I think, what I want to do. Yeah. And let's move back. Yeah, let's do the outside in. I'm sure I've misplaced several torches already. That's also why I, uh, why I go denser than I, strictly speaking, need to. Just because uh, that gives me buffer for my derp. Okay, and that's a little bit beyond our projected area. Let's 
fill in this corner of the villas just while we're here, just so we don't have to be weaving in and out. And yes, I've completely lost track of uh, proper placement protocols here. Okay, so this ladder will be the line we're building from on the other side. If that ladder is on the other side, no, why would it be? There we go. I wonder if there's... I wonder if torches can be chiseled into this pack. Oops. Like if I could be making prettier torches to put down. Well, this is definitely too close. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay. Yes, I was going from the leftmost, not to... I need to work my way down the side of the village instead of... I see. Yes. Let's just move it on down there. path clear because I have a feeling the villagers might dig up torches if they're on the path. Okay, yeah, that's... Let's just do one more for luck. Now, is there anything along this wall that needs to be lit? Kinda. All the shrubbery is making F7 mode a little bit unreliable at the moment. Okay, now let's scooch one over and move it on down. Let's fill out the village before we leave. Just like this. And all this is entirely so that I can start working 24-7 instead of having to sleep. So it is in the name of greater efficiency, ultimately. And also what that will do is, um, one unfortunate thing about Millinaire is the village children only grow up when they are asleep. Oops. That's going to be a problem. So yes, um, in order to grow a village, not just its infrastructure, but its population, you need to be spending nights awake. Is there a fountain nearby I can drink out of? Yeah. And so by switching to a 24-hour schedule, we should find that the village's population also gradually starts growing. And with that, well, it won't have too many advantages. The main one will be that if they build so many production facilities that their population can't support it, then they'll be they'll be able to start populating those. Okay, now from the extent of how far 
south it goes in the village. So about that far, a little bit past this point in the wall, like around here-ish. That's where I want to start torching. No, that doesn't look right at all. Ah, yes, I got confused by the shrubbery once again. Bamboozled. Really, I should go through and light up the whole island, ultimately. But that would be a mega project. This already is probably a small mega project. I should put something cooking on the sawmill while I'm doing this, just so I'm not losing good productivity time. Yeah. I should do that. Let me just... Oof. A red zone. Dang trees. Why do trees support monster growth? Trees are the enemy. Good. So now I kind of have the boundary line laid out. I can get rid of my derpy... my derpy uh, construction stick markers. And yeah, let's get some, uh, let's get some wood on the cooker. Let me go grab some stacks of logs. I need to repopulate my jungle pods anyway. There we go. Yes, just repopulate our jungle pods a little bit and get us a nice pile of wood to put into the mill. Give that a couple. Let's guess three. There. Now I don't feel quite as bad. No. Let's have us in torch. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the the tripes won't make the swoosh noise when I'm putting them away. Be slightly less annoying. Now here's our line o torches. And let's just start working on filling it out. Unfortunately, the shape of the island doesn't quite cooperate with a nice even grid. I don't think it would be possible with um, with the way that the terrain rises and falls anyway. see if there's any spots in need of enlightenment. Looking nice and clean so far. Let's also get downstairs. And yes, with the uh, addition of Minecraft torches, and also we're going to need fence posts, um, which we can also make now. Yes, uh, fence posts will prevent collapses if you put them down. Um, there's unfortunately no way of telling in the game files, but they will protect you from collapses within 
uh, four blocks horizontally. I'll, I'll show you what I mean if and when I ever go mining. But yes, fence posts and Minecraft torches, in my opinion, are the tools that you need before you're going to go into a more uh, in-depth mining trip. Which, honestly, I don't think we're going to need to do. I think I should have enough Tier 2 tool rods set up right now that uh, I should be able to get by until uh, tinkers. And if not, I should have enough copper just to do what need be done. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a good distance from... You know, let, let's do this more properly. Let's take this away. There we go. Yeah, we can... I have kind of completely lost track of my placement, so I'm just kind of doing this a little bit willy-nilly at this point. Yes, I can just about handle laying out a straight grid of jack-o'-lanterns on flat land with no obstructions. But when dealing with this level of chaos, uh, it's going to be a little bit scattershot. checking with each one that I'm not getting any dark spots between... Oh, they've built the marketplace. Lovely. I think that's one of the last major constructions, yes. Uh, at the marketplace, we could... Oh, we can buy a bow. I might do that. Yeah. Uh, basically, what the marketplace does is um, every day a random merchant will appear Eventually they'll expand it so that there's more merchants on a day-by-day -day basis. And uh, they sell they sell foreign goods, they sell various foods and sundries, they sell um, basically random bullshit that you'd find at any given market. It is a quite lovely little grab bag of miscellany, kind of. And actually, what was that guy charging for diamond armor? Yeah, he's charging one gold and 16 silver. Oof. Diamond armor is pretty expensive, but a bow is remarkably... Oh, and a stack of arrows for eight deniers? Okay, yeah, why not? Oh, it's eight deniers per. Well, why not? And yes, notice he has very limited stock, too. Ah, good, they're already expanding the merchant. Or, or the market. Gradually, bit by bit, we're working our way back inwards. The grass is our biggest enemy in this endeavor. And yes, I'm sorry, I know that this is a very boring project to watch. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I would cut out of regrowth. <laughs> 
and not feel bad about it later. Didn't I have a bunch of tripes that I put in one of these boxes? Yeah, because I'm running low. There we go. And very timely indeed. We have quite a ways to go. to the NPC market already, so progress is being made. This is almost certainly more dense of a torch placement than I strictly need. But we're sacrificing efficiency for thoroughness at this point. Yes, the NPCs have a little bit of lighting around them. Which is helpful if disruptive. Helpfully disruptive. a little bit better. And I imagine that it'll be a night or two of um, we're going to give this a test run and I imagine we'll have a couple of monsters showing up anyway. Or I'll venture out and I'll find that in fact no, journey map is not the limit of spawn and uh there will be like monsters who were spawning in and causing trouble at the village. Oof. Hey, we found the mine! Sawmill is already done with that stack of logs I put in. Well, not a stack stack, but a stack is in a pile of. That's another option we have is uh, if we really wanted to make a project this and be sure we could uh, use these path blocks or I could dig little paths with shovels and just spread them out and out and out, but that would take even more work. It's enough as it is just dealing with... I'm not sure if he'll disrupt torches sitting in his work area, like if he'll dig them up to plant a sapling. Hmm. I guess we'll just have to try and take it on faith. Let's put 
put as many on the fences as we can. Just nice and thorough on them. See if we can get a get this area surrounded. That is a possibility for a wood farm, though. If I, um, let me out. If I took some spruce saplings from these tree farms, a four by four area of saplings will, yeah, a four by four area of saplings will create a nice tall tree. Oh, not quite. And once I have a Tinker's Lumber Axe, that might serve to, that might serve faster and better than the dynamic trees. Because I think they'll grow a bit faster and be worth almost just as much tall spruce trees. Hmm. this point I'm kind of just guessing every so often. We're past the point of being exact. I'm just plopping them down and hoping. All the NPCs chatting at us as we're trying to work. Absolutely brutal. This wasn't supposed to be a simulation of the real world. This was supposed to be fun. Leave us alone, you demons. I think that on YouTube I might put a chapter on this. Well, I, I'm going to be signing off once I'm done with this project and give it a test run. I'll, I'll put a chapter on the test run. How's that? Yeah. So that if you just want to skip this boring part, which... I guess I should have thought of this earlier because the boring part is kind of getting close to done. But yeah, so if you just want to skip past this to when I do the test, the systems test, I do not blame you. And you are welcome to it. sloppy as hell. But when you look at what I'm dealing with, and it's not like we're spending a ton, a ton of resources on this. Really, the only hurtful investment is all the charcoal that's spent in this. Because now that I can do sticks and stuff so much easier with my semi-automatic with my semi-automatic sawmill yes the sticks are no problem now hmm and in fact wood planks are getting so easy to, to make I might start considering using them as decoration blocks Yeah, that might just be on the menu. 
in any case. Let's just get something going there. <sighs> At least our platform is almost lit. And then once all the area around it is lit, yeah. It should be lovely. Just waiting for Mr. Sun at this point. There we go. And I imagine that if I let it fall just right now, with the project maybe two-thirds done, I would still have much lesser spawn. Yeah, especially since especially since the really close in area around me would be too close for spawns to happen. Mm. But I'm hoping the journey map wasn't lying to me or isn't uh, short-sighted and that this is the extent of how far I need to go for the moment. If nothing else, it should stop preventing them from uh, pathing to me, but if I'm just leaving them to go throughout the night, then they'll be bothering the village and we want to avoid that. We definitely don't want them giving them a bola. It is not the way. At least with the way the island is shaped, this is kind of getting the, the lines are getting a bit narrower as I move towards the tip. I guess I need to move inward and see how far I went up the coast with the torches and work my way down then. Ah, yes, okay. So I do have a little bit of area left to go still. start kind of filling in this a ways. There we go. And I definitely want to do this at this stage because uh, every stage that we progress every age that we go up the quest book the monsters that can spawn will get worse and worse and worse like you saw that revolver skeleton yeah that's pretty ridiculous we don't want that in our grill and it only gets worse from there there are some monsters in this pack that straight up cannot be killed they can only be managed so yeah we want to stop them from even coming into existence in the first place if at all possible
I just know I've missed tons of spots. Pardon me, game. Okay. Hello. There we go. You are right, game? Is this too much action for your poor little heart? be so bad if I didn't have to keep scrolling back and forth between one item and another. Okay. Let's see what we have here. I think... I think I might have done it. Again, presuming... Oh, this is why we do final checks. Again, presuming that... Um, that journey map isn't lying to us. Okay, so the extent of it goes all the way out there. Yeah, those guard houses. seeing any yellow X's anywhere. So far, so good. Actually, let's yeah, get a higher view. And just as a sampler, make sure that F7 mode is still a running. If I head out here, yeah. It's very obvious. that we might have done it. I think we've just gone and done it. Yes, I think we might be good. All right. Turn that F7 mode off. And I'm going to go and check and see if the pumpkin patch is filled out yet. I think all I need is 12 more. I can make pumpkin seeds yet only if I make a mortar and I want to hold off on that until I can uh, yeah see the emerald mortar is unbreakable so it's the only one you ever really want to build all the others have limited uses I guess if I desperately needed pumpkin seeds or some other mortar product but otherwise I want that to wait until I can make my forever mortar oof my carbon footprint looms over the horizon. Hmm. 
pretty sure some of this grass has been bone mealed by pollution that has just drifted over. Give it a mow. You don't want to know what happens if I gave it a curly and a Larry, too. throw out my pumpkins. I threw out my pumpkins. Oh dear. Shameful. Simply shameful. All right, well, just for the sake of a systems test, let's fill out the rest of the platform with ugly torches. Let's see what we shall see. All right, systems test. Do we have spawns? And this will be a check in two parts. First of all, I'll be watching to see if there's anything showing up in my map. And second of all, I will be uh, taking a run around outside the periphery of our torches and our map. And I will see if I see any mob griblies dotting the floor to see if there were mobs um, showing up and getting killed by NPCs. And I suppose I... Oh, God, look at that. Look at that on the map if I... Yes, turn to the nighttime. Oof. Isn't that just gorgeous? Yes. Yes, you can, you can see that uh, it's almost regular. Almost. A couple of dimmer spots in it, but... I suppose that's to be expected. Tis the nature of the beast. Well, let's uh, let's work all night. We have an Enderman. An Enderman just kind of whooshed by us and dropped a piece of ash. Okay, we have some we have some uh, missing blocks it looks like I see a red spot on the map hmm well pfft. hmm now I guess these must be infected then what the hell Oh dear. We need to run. Yeah, we are getting one shot by Enderman. That is just no good. I should have gone to sleep the moment I saw that there were red dots on the uh, on the map. But yes, that is an unfortunate side effect of being a bit more advanced, is now uh, 
Enderman will randomly... Instead of being aggro on sight, they are now just aggro. And they will just come up and assassinate us when they feel like it. And, uh, yep, that is just the reality we live in now. Okay, well, uh, failed the test. Failed the systems test. At least can we determine where the failure is? Is it that I didn't build out far enough? Yeah, it might be. Yes, I think spawn range is in fact 128, and journey map was only filling out to like 120 something, or or 70 something. Hmm. Well, that's a disappointing end to the project. Let me just uh. Let me just do a kind of dip through the area where I was seeing red dots first. And see if I can find anything. First of all, there's my F7 mode on, yeah. So I think I was seeing them like somewhere down here-ish. Well, in, in any case, yes, we're seeing a line of griblies outside of our range. So, journey map was lying to us is part of the problem. Hmm. Gribberiste, eh? What do you sell? Ah, pumpkins. Lovely. Yes, I, I think that for now I'll have to call that project off as a non-starter. And uh, I will just finish filling out my platform just for the sake of pretties. Well, it's not really pretty, but just for the sake of completion. And then I will call it a night. Hmm. Need to buy more blocks. Yeah, well, that is a vastly disappointing result. Vastly, vastly disappointing. And now, with me down to two lives, I think I need to hold off on experimenting more until I have the funds to buy some more. Which, we are not far off. We are not far off tinkers, and this not far off our money-making scheme. Oh dear, the villagers are sick with something. Let us away from this plague-infested hellhole. Get out of my way, please. At least we can locate the glassmaker really easily just by finding the pollution cloud. Yes. Can I make pollution filters yet? Not yet. Next stage, I do believe. Oh well, at least with a vastly reduced spawn rate, we should be okay to just run up into bed if we're coming home late now. So there's a minor disadvantage, there's a minor advantage to this. This unfortunately fraught mega project.
the other reason I like jack-o'-lanterns is they serve as underwater lighting, which will be useful when we get further into the abyss. properly. is unfortunate that these things need support. I do want to get myself some glowstone blocks sooner or later. But such is life. You know, it might be easier to kind of just do this all at once. Do the underwater work. forms up those kind of squares around it, around the holes. It looks like that error corrects itself after a little while, though. That was a bit smoother. And we can finally fill in this hole in the floor. Not that it particularly matters probably should wait until I have whatever block I want for proper aesthetics, but tis what tis. Alright, well, we unfortunately have failed at becoming enlightened completely, but uh, we've become partially enlightened. And I think the real big advancement today is we now have a baseline of our artisan's tools, we have a much faster production chain on our uh, refractory clay, and we have the capability of mass processing wood. We have our first kind of automated machine, semi-automatic machine. Yes, these are all exciting developments. And God is angry at us for them, which is always a good sign. That's how you know that you're getting into the really good stuff. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>